Whoa, Blizzard, are you playing Tony Hawk here or something? Look at those ramps. Is your game dying? Ah, man, that sucks. If only there was something you could do about it. I mean, if only you knew what the community wanted. Wish there was a way to see that kind of stuff. I know you had a PvP summit back, uh, mm, let me check my calendar. Oh yeah, eight years ago. So maybe we can help you out. Today, we gathered some pro players to absolutely roast game design. So sit back as we tell you what needs nerfs and what needs buffs in Shadowlands Season 2. Speaking of buffs, if you wanted to buff yourself IRL, you would probably want advice from someone who looks like this. But if you wanted to buff your skills in WoW PvP, you would probably go to Skillcapped. I mean, skill is even in our name. For over a decade, we have been producing world-class arena guides featuring hundreds of videos that you won't find anywhere else. And now for as little as $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to all of our guides, as well as an invite to the premium section of our Discord where you can get on-demand help with all of your PvP needs. Needs. And with a money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So start your journey and check out skillcap.com slash wow today. With that out of the way, let's go over some class changes that would improve PvP, starting with the most broken classes. And warning, this is meant to be a bit more casual than a normal video, so don't take things too seriously while we roast game design. We will be putting up representation charts throughout this section, but remember that just because the spec is well represented doesn't necessarily mean it's broken. But speaking of broken, every warrior player is licking their lips every arena game, waiting for the moment they can get an ego boost for pressing one of their 3,000 defensive abilities. Blizzard has treated the warrior class like a Kobe beef cow, plumping it up with enough defensive abilities that it doesn't matter if their greasy fingers slip and accidentally hit the wrong key on a go. Seriously though, the defensive toolkit is so unbelievably bloated that it is hard to know exactly what to fix. One easy solution would be to increase the cooldown of Intimidating Shout, since it is essentially an AoE blind on a 90 second cooldown and is one of the most guaranteed ways to shut down a kill. On top of that, defensive stance needs to be more punishing since warriors can just camp inside of it like it's a tent, so maybe it should decrease damage taken by 10% instead of giving them a permanent 20%. This is especially true when you consider how much healing warriors do to themselves with Ignore Pain, an ability so strong that it has completely removed the need to press slam ever in arena. And for the love of god, something needs to be done with Conqueror's Banner because every time I see it I wish everyone on the enemy team would be Conqueror's Banned instantly. There is really no reason why a class with the most defensive utility in the game would need an additional AoE damage multiplier unless they somehow forget to press execute the entire game. Moving on, Hunter has one obvious outlier as a fundamentally broken spec, and it should come as no surprise that marksmanship needs major nerfs. Just kidding, of course. Clearly, Beast Mastery is one of the best pure damage classes in the game, having access to one of Shadowlands' god tier comps. And somehow, Craven Strategium has avoided nerfs the entire expansion because it truly allows you to cheat dying every time Feign Death is off cooldown. This legendary alone removes entire win conditions for some classes. But focusing on the offensive side of things, BM damage is clearly an issue since it's able to compete on DPS with AoE damage classes like Affliction Warlocks and Balanced Druids as a single celled class that only deals single target damage. It's hard to say exactly what should be changed, but a baseline nerf to most of its offensive toolkit might be a good place to start. Speaking of easy classes, during a presentation at BlizzCon 2016, Blizzard revealed that it wants Demon Hunter players to only need a single action bar. The WoW devs definitely hit their goals, since all you need on a DH is Metamorphosis and the Hunt in Shadowlands Season 2. The strength of their offensive CDs becomes a massive issue due to the upfront damage of the Hunt. Not because the Hunt does too much damage, but because it creates a game of cat and mouse with many Demon Hunters continuously fake casting like they just discovered what juking is and hope hoping to preemptively burn defenses from their target. Demon Hunters have tricked themselves into thinking this is a cool outplay, but the problem is that it is a one-sided interaction. The Demon Hunter does not really get punished for spam faking their casts, but instead their target is forced to gamble with two bad decisions, like they're being asked by their non-existent girlfriends if this dress makes them look fat. One popular solution is to make the hunt unfakeable, but a better solution might be either decreasing its damage in PvP or increasing its cast time to allow for more outplay. On the topic of outplaying you, Windwalker monks must be the most mechanically gifted players in the game ever since they can skillfully outplay you with just one button. We devoted an entire video explaining how and why spinning crane kick is just so busted in Season 2, and it all comes down to how many multipliers go into affecting its damage. 
Of all possible ways to tone down monk damage, nerfing Dance of Chi Ji seems the most sensible, since it has created a really toxic playstyle where monks can level up their fishing skill during arena by fishing for RNG damage procs the entire game. Mistweaver is still ridiculously underrepresented despite massive buffs in 9.1. The irony is that it has really good healing output, but apparently the class designers didn't get the memo that healers don't actually need to cast this expansion. On top of needing to hardcast everything, they are still really weak in stuns. The combination of these two things makes them really weak in a melee dominant meta. Against casters, however, Mistweavers might actually be the best healer, since the threat of tanking stuns and interrupts is generally lower. The new Peaceweaver talent might become a bit overtuned if the meta ever shifts over to caster Cleave City. But staying in melee Cleave City for a bit, Rhett Paladins are still a bit toxic when it comes to their place in Arena. It should go without saying that Rhett Burst is probably too good. Unfortunately, their damage during cooldowns is really all they have offensively because Crusader Strike damage is so low that it might actually heal their targets. One of the biggest issues with their burst is just how much it can vary due to the Ringing Clarity Conduit, which can proc Judgment three times during Divine Toll. Shifting some of their damage away from cooldowns and more towards sustained pressure might make the spec feel better as a whole, since the cooldown-centric toolkit encourages Rhett to spend half of the game running away and waiting for damage to come back up. Holy Paladin is actually in a good spot, though their mana bar is still drier than your mouth after eating a handful of saltines. On the throughput side, the only thing that might be a bit overtuned is the Awakening talent, since it can completely determine the outcome of games. Going an entire game without a Wings proc is too punishing, whereas high rolling procs allows your team to stay alive longer than members of the royal family. And capping off the royalty of Shadowlands, we have mages. Fire has been in contention for best spec in the entire game since the expansion's release, and despite nerfs in 9.1, it is still able to compete for that title. There are two schools of thought on how to fix fire. One focuses on the amount of damage multipliers that go into combustion. Rune of Power and Infernal Cascade make the cooldown feel a bit bloated, especially considering it can be reset with Shifting Power and Pyrokinesis. The fix here would be addressing the damage multipliers that go into combustion, and instead shifting mages towards more sustained DPS. The other fix to Fire Mage is to target its defensives, since Triune Ward might be a bit over-budgeted in combination with the Diverted Energy Conduit, on top of other forms of passive defense like Cauterize and active defense like Mirror Image. Oh yeah, did you know Mirror Images give Mages 20% damage reduction? It's hard to pinpoint exactly what should be changed for Mage defensives, but targeting Triune Ward is probably a good start. Of all the classes we've mentioned so far, each has an obvious problem that sticks out like an IRL streamer having lunch with her Twitch mods. But with the most broken classes out of the way, let's take it down a tone and look at the kinda broken specs in Season 2. Kicking things off, we have Rogue. Now, the last time I checked, the word subtlety implies being sneaky, but it doesn't seem really subtle when a rogue is able to cheap shot an entire team while bursting. Rogue energy management doesn't really seem to matter as much as it should, and this has kept comps like RMP on the S tier for quite a while. Passives like Shadow Techniques and Relentless Strikes on top of Symbols of Death feed way too much energy into Rogue, avoiding the penalty of not having enough energy for damage. And with Shadow Dance having two charges, there is almost no downtime in how frequently a sub-Rogue can take control over a game. Assassination deals a bunch of damage, but if you believe in class fantasy, it probably should. And although its damage really isn't that cheesy, its defensives definitely are, especially as Necrolord. As much as Rogues would like to complain that they are squishy and die easily, Fleshcraft, Oozes, Frictionless Coating, and a few conduits have something to say about that. All three of the pre specs are as mildly inoffensive as your average episode of The Simpsons. Both Holy and Disc have their own unique identities with actual weaknesses, something which is quite rare in class balance. One of the things to look out for in the future is the Fey Guardian's ability for Night Fey Disc Priests. On paper, this ability is absolutely insane, and if we learned one thing from BFA, it's that cooldown reduction is broken in slower metas. Shadow is obviously strong, but it's one of the most honest DPS specs in the game, not being nearly as cheesy as some of the other S tiers. One thing that might need to be toned down a bit is the strength of improved mass dispel, since it is just too well budgeted as a PvP talent. Increasing its cast time or removing the cooldown reduction might help fix this. On top of that, the low mana cost of dispel magic is a bit of an issue, since Shadow Priests can just AFK on their purge every time they get kicked, which kind of defeats the purpose of getting interrupted. 
Both Shaman DPS specs are relatively balanced in Season 2, especially Elemental, which has been a high tier caster all expansion. Enhancement does have a bit of cheddar, with Chain Harvest being a bit over budgeted in Arena, possibly needing a nerf in the future. Unfortunately, Enhance does feel a bit clunky while off healing, since the high mana cost of healing surge limits the use of other globals. If one spec is broken with Shaman, it's definitely Restoration, which has come out on top as the best healer in Season 2. There are a few reasons for this, but the melee heavy meta is one huge factor, with Shamans being the most efficient healer without the need to hard cast in many situations. And of course, there is the infamous Dwayne the Rock Johnson legendary that has overwhelmed both 2v2 and 3v3 as a healing spec can just press one button and do 100k damage to the enemy team. Seems really fun and interactive. For all specs, the vital accretion conduit might be too good since it lasts for an entire minute without any obvious counterplay. Capping off this trend of hybrids, both Balance and Resto are actually fairly balanced. Hear us out. Outside of Convoke, Balance doesn't really have any cheese it can kill you with. Its damage is relatively telegraphed, and even though their DPS is high, it's really only threatening during Celestial Alignment. Resto is arguably the best healer when it comes to actual healing, since their output and efficiency are unmatched by the rest of the healer lineup. The relatively short cooldown of Nature's Swiftness might be too good with the Ready for Anything conduit, and perhaps a cooldown swap with Iron Bark might feel better overall for Druids, since they lack consistent damage mitigation. Feral is where things get complicated, since their off healing is still a massive problem. The main issue is with the combination of predatory swiftness with the overbudgeted strength of the wild talent, which allows them to get powerful regrowths off without much counterplay. This is on top of a class-wide issue with Necrolord Resto Druids, who have far too many synergistic defenses with Fleshcraft and their insanely strong Endurance Conduit selection. Well-honed instincts, innate resolve, and ursine vigor all have synergistic interactions with Frenzied Regeneration, making all Druid specs tankier than the ego of someone who plays RMP at 2200. Ironically, being balanced in Shadowlands is actually a bad thing, since there is so much broken that playing fair is a form of masochism. And there is no class that must hate themselves more in PvP than Warlocks. Historically, people have played Affliction because it is the quintessential rot spec, but Shadowlands has sent all rot comps to the Jailer after game designers decided it would be a good idea to make every class have a million self heals. Affliction just needs more consistent damage outside of Dark Soul, since it has to waste precious minutes waiting for its damage to actually matter, while a Windwalker Monk can do 30 seconds worth of regular dot damage in a single spinning crane kick. Destruction is actually pretty balanced, maturing quite well since its monstrosity of BFA Season 4. Unfortunately, the popularity of Melee Cleaves has really prevented the spec from fully flourishing, but honestly, maybe that's a good thing. As far as anyone can tell, Demo Warlocks only do two things in Arena, spamming your screen with nameplates and creating a fire hazard for your 2014 graphics card. Demon Bolt damage might be a bit problematic with the Necrolord Legendary, but I say we just let them have fun for a bit. And if there's one class that actually feels balanced in Shadowlands, it's Death Knight. Both of its PvP specs are mid-tier at best, with Frost generally being considered stronger overall. If there is one broken thing about Death Knights, it's the Spell Warden PvP talent, which doubles the effect of Rune of Spell Warding. It's clear that whoever designs DKs in PvP really does not like casters. At the cost of some damage, DKs can become infinitely tankier against wizards, and if the meta ever slows down, this talent might wind up being a huge problem. Finishing things off, we have some general game-wide problems, and we see two major outliers. The first is Fleshcraft. This spell is perfectly designed for the same boomers that actually make the game. It doesn't matter if you are slow and forget to use a defensive in the first go of the game because you have a minute in the starting room to preemptively use a major cooldown. Seriously though, the ability to get a 2 minute damage shield before the game even starts has created a massive problem in PvP because it gives Necrolord players a free pass on using a defensive CD. A reduction in its overall duration might help solve this issue since teams wouldn't be able to get infinite value from an ability before the gates even open. The second game-wide problem is just the sheer amount of damage multipliers in PvP. It's impossible to know exactly how hard a spell will hit because there are just so many things affecting its damage. 
We have an entire video about this and we highly recommend checking it out, but the TLDR is unless you have CIA level intelligence, you can never really plan for how much damage you will take from certain classes. Part of this is the increase of the crit multiplier from 150% to 175% in Shadowlands, but reverting this might not be the best solution. Some classes just feel like they have 7,000 things synergizing together to buff the damage of a single spell, and that makes gameplay feel really unpredictable and toxic sometimes. Look, there's a lot that could be done to improve class balance in WoW, and recent hotfixes haven't really done anything. But we hope you had a few laughs and learned a few things in this video. And if you want to continue learning about WoW PvP, be sure to check out Skillcapped, where we will continue to update all of our world-class content for Season 2. As always, though, thanks for watching. See you soon.